Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator. I'm an old guy, Gaming In. In this episode, we are going to continue our work here on June 1st. Uh, so we're going to get our chores knocked out before we move on to our hay. And so, let's see. We're going to have to uh, deliver a load of milk to the dairy, most likely. Uh, I'll check the bakery and see how they're doing. But the bakery doesn't consume milk uh, anywhere near as quickly as the dairy does. Uh, we have to put water in the greenhouses. And then after that, we'll kind of see uh, where else or, or what else we need to do. So let's load up the milk here. There we go, almost 7,000 liters. And um, we want to look at the bakery. Yeah, the bakery's still doing pretty good on milk, so we'll probably put all of this milk in the dairy, which is very low at the moment. And then we'll take our tanker after that and do the water in the greenhouses. Oh, and we need to move um, wool over to the spinnery as well. So let's get all that stuff done before we get started on our hay.
It is time for us to get going on the hay. And so what we're going to do is, as I've mentioned, uh, we're going to try some bunker silage out. So the first order of business on that is we're going to need uh, at least two things. We are going to need a, uh, let's go to, to telehandler tools. And we're going to want, um, a silage fort, probably, I'm thinking. Uh, that has 4,500 liters. I wonder if there is... Huh. I wonder if there's a... Oh, what's the other configuration? JCBQ fit? I don't, even, I don't even know what that is. Um, what do we have in front loader tools for, for this? We have a manure fork, a fork with a grapple. I think that's more for logging, maybe. And that's a grapple agri-shark. Grapple oxy-couples. Looks like it can pick up anything. A rake silage. That must be for like uh, leveling out the silage. Multi grapple, grapple. Man, there's all kinds of stuff in here, man. Um, that's 1,100 liters. That's only a thousand liters. I want something with you know decent capacity. 1350, 1200. All right, let's go to front loader or wheel loader tools for a second. I know there's supposed to be like a really Big fork in here. Oh, 8,000 liters. Oh, my goodness. Um, does that have a telehandler attachment? It doesn't. So it only is going to work with a front loader. That's probably just going to be a little bit too big for our, our telehandler anyway. Uh, we could just use a, a bucket. I mean, a bucket will work with silage too. I'm pretty sure that it will. Light, light material bucket. That's 6,000 liters. And yeah, it shows silage. Uh, down here. Um, but again, that's, yeah, okay, that's front loader. So let's go back to telehandler. And the universal bucket here is 2640. This JCB is 3000 liters. That's 4500 liters, but if we got something like this, we can't also use it as a bucket. 
This is a grain shovel, but it also will work with silage, and it's 5,000 liters. That's pretty good size there. And I think, actually, I think I've used this before. I just, I think we leased it once. Um, yeah, so let's, um, since this will work with silage and, you know, pretty much anything else that's shown down here, why don't we get this? Now, we could probably also use this to level out the, the heap, too. Um, and it's not that much money, so let's just buy it. Because even if it doesn't work for the silage, at least now we have a bucket that, uh, JCBQ fit. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we don't, I don't know why we would need a JCBQ fit. Anyway. Okay, now, what I am going to lease, however, is a forage wagon. I don't want to purchase a forage wagon until I know for sure that I like doing things this way. And, um, yeah, so... Why don't we get, let's see, what's the capacity on this one? That's 16,000 liters. That's 23,000 liters. That's 26,000, 35,000. Um, we're starting to get pretty doggone expensive here, though. 26 or 23. There's a massive price difference between these two for only 3,000 more liters. So let's just go with this Strotman. Um, again, this is just to try it to see if I like it. And if I do like it, you know, then maybe what we'll, we'll look at is getting a large, buying a larger one later on. Um, oh, we could put a silage additive tank on there. Well, that's, that's useful. And then wheel setup, that's not something we can change. Yeah, okay, I don't really care about that because this is a lease anyways. So, um, yeah, I kind of like the idea of the silage additive. However, yeah, no, actually I do. I like the idea of that. But let's get that. We're going to have to buy some silage additive. I don't think I have any left. Uh, so that's going to cost us $24.48, which is okay, not a problem there. And now we have our forage wagon. Okay, cool. So, let's do this. Let's get, um, let's get the forage wagon over by the um, pile, and I want to put. Oh, actually, you know what? This might be able to pick the pile up directly. Now that I think about it, I don't know if it's going to hold all of it though, because I have no idea how much is actually sitting on the ground there. Well, it's a full TMR wagons load. Let's just see what happens. We might not even need the bucket if we can pick it all up with this, but that's okay. Again, I want, I want the bucket just to have it. So regardless, it's a good thing that we have that bucket now. Okay, so let's see here. Yep, it's picking it up. Nice. Very nice. Okay, cool. So this basically is sort of like a baler, except for baling, it just throws the loose stuff in the in the wagon itself. Okay, so we got that done. Now what I'm gonna do is Turn the wagon off. I'm just going to park it here for now. And now what we're going to need to do is go into here, and we're going to need to put in a silage bunker, which I'm planning on just putting right in the same general area here. Um...
I wonder if we'd be further ahead to put it over out here a little more just because that tree might be in the way. I'd rather not cut the tree down because I kind of like it there. Plus, this will give us a, a larger staging area if we need it. So, okay, let's do this then. Um, I think I want to do just a little bit of leveling here, or maybe let's try smoothing before we try leveling here. Um, so... Just want to kind of bring this down a little here so it's not quite so up in the air. Okay, that's better. Very good. Okay, so let's go to silos, and we're going to get the small bunker. Uh, yeah, probably right about here is where we're going to want this. Okay, so that kind of... messed things up here a little bit, so let's see if we can... Relax this. All right. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, also, it looks like it's using a concrete texture along there. Um, so why don't we also just kind of finish the rest of this out? Concrete, asphalt, so it looks good. I'm going to increase the size of that a little bit. Went a little too far that way, but that's all right. Um, how about if we just, yeah, do that and maybe even this. Okay, now I want to put this back to just grass along here. And, um, I think I do want to get rid of this shrub only because... Sometimes the silage will spill out the sides. So if we have to get back in there, we can do that. Um, and actually, you know, based upon that, maybe we better... Oh my goodness, there's a stump in there. How funny is that? Let's just kind of get rid of all of these shrubs for that reason. Or at least that many. Oh, crap. Okay. Actually, you know what? I can remove that stump with the Lumberjack mod. Now that I think about it. And I don't know. I think this is kind of looking weird too. Having that one little strip of grass there. So why don't we gravel this up. There. I think I like that better. Okay. That should work. I'm thinking. I almost want to also do something like this. Just kind of have like a little lead in area. Maybe even make it a little more gradual. Something like that. Okay. Yep, I think that's good. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to take and dump the silage in the bunker. 
and we have to compact it, which the poor man's way of doing that is to just keep driving over it with your tractor or whatever. But you can also get rollers uh, to do that as well. Um, so let's see, how do I tip this? Um, oh, it's control I to unload. Okay, let's um. I think we want to be all the way in the bunker, and then we want to kind of spread it out fairly evenly here. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to cut this little patch of hay right here um, and then pick that up and we'll just see how much that gets us. I have no idea. I've never done this before. I've, like I said, I've watched um, other people do it, but I've never done it myself. Uh, so let's get on over to the... Uh, yeah, to you. And of course, we want to make sure swathing is on. We could even put the V-rake on front of the tractor, on the front of the tractor, um, and do it that way. Actually, especially if we wanted eventually to have the have a worker pick it up, which we probably will if we end up doing this all the time. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, cut this little field here, and we'll see what we end up with. Oh, I gotta get silage additive in that tank too. Uh, you know what? Actually, because that's a lease, and because I'm gonna return it and get a better one if I like this, I don't think I'm gonna do silage additive after all. Because otherwise, I'm gonna put it in there, and then when we turn it back in, I lose it. So let's not worry about that this time around. Even though I paid a little extra for the tank, but it is what it is. Not the end of the world. And it takes a long time for those rear cutters to go down if you're not moving. If you're moving, they, they go down quickly, but here, actually, I want to get this little patch of grass here, too. Okay, let's park the mower over here, because I'm not entirely sure yet how we're going to cut the rest of our hay. So we'll just uh, leave it there for now. And we'll get these swaths picked up and dumped in the bunker. I didn't actually look yet to see in the bunker how much is uh, in there. Oh man, should we put silage additive? I mean, it's not that expensive. I don't think it is anyways. Let's look. It's uh, it's 3,000 bucks. We don't have to fill the whole thing up though either. You know what? Let's do it. Let's just do it. We, I want to maximize our, our yield here. Okay, so I'm not going to put a lot of this in. Let's just do like that much because it does last a long time. Uh, well, at least it does on my baler. I'm not sure if it, how it will do on this, but we'll see. Okay. Let's pick up some uh, hay here. And it's using the si bond silage. Yep, it is. Okay, good.
This uh, pickup, oh nice. This, this uh, hay pickup seems to have a really wide coverage area, which is very useful. Wider than I think the baler does. Yeah, see, it's picking up. Well, I think the baler would pick that much up, too. Okay, so we're already at about 60% full here. Oh, I missed a little spot. hard here and then back in to get the rest of that. Oh, nope. I turned the wheel the wrong direction there. Not what I meant to do. It's okay. Just a little bit of a tight corner here now with all the stuff that's here. Okay, so we're at 81% full now. Don't think we're going to get to the end of this windrow. Nope, we're not. All right, so that's a full wagon there. 23,000 liters. Okay. Flip around this way and then go back the other direction. I might, I could probably go a little slower. There we go. Okay, and then as you can see, as I'm driving over it, it's kind of starting to flatten it out. Uh, let's see what it says. Okay, why isn't it showing us how full it is? How am I supposed to see that? Do we have to... Oh, we have to turn the, the help menu on. Okay. So fill level is to 30,507 and it's 13% compacted. Alright, how... What is the capacity of this thing? Buildings, silos. It doesn't tell us. So I don't know how how much we can get in there. So, hmm. I wonder why it doesn't tell you. Okay, well. Let's just keep putting uh, stuff in there. Oh, actually, I want to go back and start where we left off on this windrow. It could be that this little field here is perfect for our own silage needs, you know, we and maybe we only need to harvest it once a year for our cows and then the rest of the time, you know, we just use it for selling.
Pretty cool, man. I love it. Just a different way to do it, right? A different way to do it. You don't have the hassle and time it takes to bale and then have to move multiple bales, but the trade-off is you do have to take the time, uh, you know, to, to compact it. And then I don't know if you can move the silage, you know, you know how like when we pull up to the manure bunker and we can just load it up automatically. I don't know if that works here or if we have to actually use a, the bucket to load it. But I don't think we would want to do that anyways with the TMR because we need to be careful about how much we put in there. So we, we'll probably still use the bucket anyways. But, you know, one big scoop of silage, a 5,000 liter scoop of silage, I think, is... Um, it's, it's comparable to a bale. I don't remember what are the what's the size on these bales? I think these are 6,500 liters. I think. Yeah, 6,500 liters. So one bucket load is just a little bit less than one of those bales. So we would probably do like a bucket and a half load or so. Let's go a little bit slower. Whoop. Kind of took off there. Okay. Should be able to get one more load from here. all that forage going right on into the wagon. Yeah, now that I think about it, if, if we had to manually load this with a bucket loader in terms of using it for selling, that would be a lot of work because you got to figure one bucket load is less than one silage bale. Whereas if they're in bales, I, I just use the universal pickup thingy and, you know, load a bunch of them all in a few seconds. So that would make doing this for selling probably a royal pain in the neck now that I think of it that way. So I think we should probably stick to bales uh, for selling. But for our own use, this could be a really cool way to do it. All right, now the next thing I want to see if I can determine is if we look at this, we currently have... 66,000 liters. So we have about 10 silage bales worth of silage in here. Which is pretty close to a year's supply. Plus, I still have two more of these also. So I think that's good, guys. I, I think this will be enough silage. Um, well, and, you know, we're already... A half a year gone anyway I mean well almost because it, it, it's June so I could do one of two things I could I could fill this all the way up and then that'll probably hold us in good stead for two or three years 
Um, but then in that, but you know, but then that's going to cut into our our hay profit sales at the end of the year. So I don't know. I'm kind of thinking we stop here. How much bond silage is left in the thingy? Nine percent. Okay, that's that's not a lot. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we stop here for this year? And then, you know, we'll use the we'll use we'll use up those bales first and then in a few months we'll start tapping into this. And um, you know, use use this for our TMR mixture. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think this is probably not a good solution for for selling. So now all we have to do really is just kind of drive over this. I wonder if I sh if I need to scoop. See how it says compacting in the left-hand side there as I drive over it. So we just have to keep driving over it until it's 100% compacted. Why don't we just do that? Why don't we just keep driving back and forth over? I know you can purchase like um you know silage rollers or even self-propelled machines for this purpose, but probably not worth the investment for just a little small setup like this. So I'm just going to keep driving back and forth over this until it's fully compacted. Then we'll cover it up. I might want to get the bucket though and put, push some of that back in because yeah, see as I flatten it out, it's actually kind of squirting out the sides. So I guess the lesson learned there is don't dump it right at the very start. You got to be in a little ways. So we'll keep that in mind for, you know, next time around. You could even put another tractor on follow me and run two through, but again, this isn't going to take me that long, so... I wonder if the stuff that spills out the side will still be covered as well. I guess there's only one way to find that out. If it doesn't, then we basically lose it, or we put it in a pile and use it later. Hey, we're getting there. Okay, 100% compacted. All right, now I'm just gonna take a chance and cover this, and if the stuff that's spilled out, if it doesn't cover, it doesn't cover, and we'll just scoop it up and save it for the for the next time okay so now we blanket silo yeah see it doesn't cover it up it only covers up what was in there can I unblanket the silo no I don't think I can okay no problem I mean that's not that much that isn't that much here let's deal with this I think um supposed to be able to Remove stumps with Lumberjack mod, which I do have enabled. It's supposed to turn red. There we go. <laughs> Not super realistic, but hey, whatever, right? Okay, so I think that's it, guys, for our bunker silage. That's pretty cool, man. I like that. And, um... So, yeah, there's probably not any reason for us to keep the forage wagon so we might as well return it so we don't have to pay an, another hour fee on it we'll lose nine percent of the bond silage unless oh can i offload that actually um usually that's control i oh no that never mind what about shift i now i i think i tried to unload it from my baler and I couldn't either so once you put it in there it's in there uh, but again not not a huge amount we'll be okay okay so let's return the lease that was fun I enjoyed that
Uh, and, you know, if, if it ends up we only do this once a year or even less than once a year, we might as well just lease these. There's no point in buying one unless one comes up on sale, I suppose. Uh, okay, so let's return that. There we go. All right. Our first batch of little bunker silage there. I love it. Well, um, I guess the rest of the hay is going to be done in the normal fashion. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do different this time, though, is I'm going to... I'm not going to windrow. I'm going to cut the hay loose because I think that's going to help the workers pick it up better with the V-rake. At least that's my theory. Uh, so let's go... Uh, get that set up here. Now I'm going to try this without follow me on just to see how well the worker does on his own you know with the v-rake to essentially guide him you know fake him out and make him think he's wind rowing so let's do a couple of um passes first before we get the worker started and we want to set this to loose okay We'll see how this works. Follow me definitely is the best way to do this, uh, I think. Well, it's the most reliable way to do it. But if you can get the worker to do it on their own and you don't have to babysit them, then that's, you know, faster. So that's why I want to try it again this way, just to see if it makes any difference at all. Nice thing about mowing loose like this, too, is it's not as critical that you have nice and straight windrows. Just got to get all the hay cut. All right, let's just see what he does. Oh, okay, he doesn't want to go at all. All right, it's probably because we're too close to the trees, I'm guessing. So maybe I am going to have to do the headlands. Oh, that really does slow it down, though. Wow. It's because the it's pulling in all of the hay with the rake at the same time so that's I guess yeah that's kind of a downside to this because it will go a little faster with the windrows four miles an hour that's gonna take a while <laughs> I mean it's yeah hmm maybe this isn't the best idea because it just means it's gonna take longer and I'm gonna have to pay for more hours On the other hand, though, if it if it makes the worker more accurate and get more of it done without my help, then it could be a, a fair trade-off, I suppose. You know what I'm going to do, though, is... Uh, let's... Let's switch you back to windrowing. Because we know that we know that does work. I mean, reasonably well, anyways. Okay, what happens if we turn the worker loose here? Okay, he's doing it. Um, let's just see what he does when he gets down to the other end, though. Oh, 
Okay, so this does appear to work. Now he's going six miles an hour. Are we going on a little downhill thingy or something? We were going downhill on the other side. Okay, now it's down to four. Well, it's fluctuating between four and six, I, I guess, based upon the terrain. I mean, I'm okay if, you know, if it's going to go between f between four and six. But if it's consistently four, which is what it appeared to be at first. And he, okay, so he also appears to be stopping where the, um, where the mower stopped. So he's not detecting that the horizontal cut also needs to be done which means we probably shouldn't do a double headland. Okay, so he's going downhill, but he's at four miles an hour. Well, now he's at five. Okay, I want to try something. Let's take him and put him over on the windrows and see if it's significantly faster. Because the rake, you know, on the windrows, the rake doesn't have to pull in it as much material. Well, maybe not, though. I mean, it's still, we're still looking at four miles an hour, so maybe that doesn't really matter. Okay, well, then that being the case... What I'm going to do is, um, it's too bad I didn't have two fast bailers because then I could get two going at the same time, but I might as well do this. So I'm not paying more than I need to. And I might switch back to loose, loose mode too. There we go. Okay, let's go to it. Okay, so it says he thinks he's finished his task. He's probably just a little confused about where he's supposed to be going. I think what I'll do is I'll get the headland out of the way and then we'll turn him loose again and see what he does. Okay, so I got uh, the headlands out of the way. So let's go ahead and get him started back up here and see what he see how they do here. We'll stick with them until they get to the end and then and then go from there. We're gonna have to probably get that bail out of the way actually. So let's do that. That is definitely, I've mentioned this before, definitely a downside to doing the smaller bales is there's a lot more of them and therefore they get in the way. But the fast baler, unfortunately, doesn't uh, do the larger bales. That is really cool looking. Look at that. Oh, sorry. 
Get out of the way. Oh, come on, man. Why aren't you doing that last little bit there? Okay. Well, let's leave them to it, or he he to it, and we will continue doing the mowing here. Um, I'm gonna wait to do the other fields because <coughs> uh, I want to see how well he's gonna do overall on this field because I might end up, you know, going back to, to using follow me on the other fields because we know that works. And I don't know, you know, it's, I guess it's just kind of a trade-off because follow me takes longer because I have to make sure I don't get too far ahead, but the worker is just so much more accurate that way, you know, so... If I have to keep stopping and restarting them and fixing stuff doing it this way, then it becomes less efficient. So it says he's done on that end of the field. Might as well finish this little bit up here and then we'll go get him set in the next spot. Okay, let's turn him loose. See how they do. All right, guys. So the worker is uh, doing okay for the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up the bales and then we can get another worker started on the rolling. I'm just trying to maximize my my time here because I'm sort of kind of not... I'm, I'm sitting around twiddling my thumbs at the moment because, again, I haven't decided if I'm going to use follow me on these other fields, but I'm starting to think maybe I should because it's probably going to just save, save us time in the long run uh, to just use follow me. But, uh, yeah, so he's still he's still over there working, doing his thing. Oh, I need to hook up my lines here. There we go. So we'll all get the these bales picked up. So we can at least get some rolling started. That one might be a little too close. There we go. I'll have to come back for that other one. It's too far away. Oh, we missed a little strip there, but that's all right. So, I mean, theoretically, having the worker do it by themselves with the V-rake is faster, but it becomes not faster when, you know, they're missing stuff and you got to go back around and re bail you know like these ends that they're missing and stuff um so i think taking all of that into account is probably best to just use follow me the overall process will take a little bit longer well actually it'll seem like it might seem like it'll take a little bit longer but maybe it won't you know can we grab this one nope a little closer there we go Oh, that was odd. Just kind of snapped all of a sudden. But he's still going, though. Look at all these bales. <laughs> There's so many of them. We get a really good yield off these fields, though, because we take good care of them.
Okay, so we got our first load here. And I'm just going to drop that off right next to the storage. Uh, we want to make sure this offloads on the left. Unloading side right, unloading side left. There we go. Nice. And that's the first full load, so we got to remember that to pay our workers. But we can just count the stacks when we're all done for that, so that's why I don't have to keep track of it right now. Okay, well, let's continue on here. Um, I'm going to finish up this field, and then when we switch over to the other field there, um, I'll bring you guys back at that point to start... Uh, with the follow me process so i'll see you in a bit all right guys uh we are um ready to do the next uh set of fields there i've got a worker over on the other big field there rolling right at the moment and then we got the baler set up and ready uh, for follow me uh, so let's get you going first okay So we probably want to get back over this way a little bit. Yeah, I was just, I started off too far over, that's all there is to it. Looks like he's going to be able to pick up this, though. All right, cool. So, yeah, um, <coughs> we're basically, I'm just basically going to use follow me for the rest of, uh, for these two fields here and finish up the job. But we are out of time, guys, in this episode. So I'm going to let you go here. Uh, next month is going to be July. We're going to have... The computer farmer hay contracts and probably some fertilizing and cultivating contracts too. And also, let's look at the calendar here real quick. So July uh, wheat and well, there's I don't think there's any barley left on the map, but wheat and oats can be harvested in July. I'm not really interested in canola because. We don't have any productions that can use canola, um, but any wheat, any big wheat contracts that come up, we will probably take. That is the tentative plan anyways. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. Guys, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.